Good morning, everyone. It's PJ here again. Welcome to the Wednesday morning devotion of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. As we continue in our Bible discovery reading through the Gospel of John, we'll be starting a new chapter this morning. So last Wednesday, we wrapped up with John chapter 6. So this morning, we'll be looking at the beginning of John chapter 7. So namely, verses 1 to 14. Now, 14 verses might be a bit long for a short devotion, so I may be talking about John 7, 1 to 14 next week again. So, um, let's see. Let, let's see what we can finish today. So, um, I'll, I'll go straight into it. I'll read John 14, 1 to 7, and let's try and find out what God may be telling us through these verses. So, as usual, I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version, but you can use whatever version is available to you. So, let me read that. It says from verse 1 of chapter 7, it says, After this, so that is after the miracles that Jesus had been doing and the, the things that he taught in chapter 6, it says, After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea, because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. Then verse 2. But when the Jewish festival of the Bernacles was near, Jesus' brother said to him, Leave Galilee and go to Judea, so that your disciples there may see the works you do. No one wants to become a public figure who wants to be a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. Verse 5, for even his own brothers did not believe in him. Uh, just for context there. So Galilee uh, is a region in the northern portion of Israel. And it's considered to be a more backward or unsophisticated region of their country. While Judea would be the metropolitan city, you know, you know where the city of Jerusalem and um, other more prominent cities are found. So it seems Jesus' own brothers, his own half-brothers, um, wanted Jesus to be ridiculed and, and they wanted him to fail. And so they were daring him to go teach in the city. So uh, that was what was happening there. So in verse 6, uh, in verse six, next it says, verse 6, Therefore Jesus told them, My time is not yet here. For you, any time will do. The world cannot hate you because it hates because, uh, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go to the festival. I'm not going up to the festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he said this, he stayed in Galilee. Verse 10. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, Where is he? Among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, He's a good man. Others replied, No, he deceives people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. In verse 14, Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. All right, so that is our passage for this morning. That was um, John 7, 1 to 14. So to try and find out what God is telling us through this portion of Jesus' life, as recorded by John, I will again be using uh, a set of Bible discovery questions. So these are just general and open-ended questions that can help us better understand what we've read in the Bible. So you, you, you may also use these questions when you're reading alone. Or even better, when you're reading the Bible with, with someone else, these questions, they tend to help you consider more or think, think deeper about what, may God, what, what God may be telling you through the verses um, that you've read. And since these questions are general and open-ended, there's no specific right or wrong answers to them. So everyone can share their ideas. Um, but as mentioned, they're a good means of digging deeper into God's possible message for you. And of course, it's also a great way to open up a conversation or a discussion if you're reading the Bible with someone else and, and so you can share your ideas and, and um, 
what you what you believe God um, wants you to to learn through His Word. So let let let's do that. Let's ask and answer these Bible discovery questions uh, regarding the passage, and let's see what God may be telling us through John seven one to fourteen. So the first Bible discovery question that I usually ask is simply, um, what did you like most? Or what stood out to you the most in the passage that we just read? So again, it can be anything that uh, you liked or maybe stood out to you. It was striking. And for me, what stood out the most in John 7, 1 to 14? This, this happened to me um, when, when I was a younger Christian, when I first read this passage. What stood out the most was Jesus' response to his brothers in verses 8 to 10, where Jesus seemed to have lied about his plans of not going to the festival. So from, from verse 8, I'll read it again. From verse 8, Jesus said, You go to the festival. He, he's speaking to his brothers. You go to the festival. I'm not going up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. And after he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. So I asked myself, did Jesus just lie to his brothers about his plans to go to the festival? And as mentioned, to be honest, this, this bothered me a little the first time I read the passage, um, which again was many years ago now. Um, and because I was a young Christian then, I, I didn't know what to think about that. Um, but in time, as I read the Bible more, as I learned more, um, I found out um, that from the context of the passage, and from the response or the lack of response from his brothers, like they did see Jesus later at the festival when Jesus started teaching publicly again, as we read halfway through. But not one of them, not one of his brothers, his half-brothers, despite of their lack of fondness for Jesus and, and their unbelief, none of the brothers accused him of lying. N none of them called Jesus, hey, hey, you said you weren't going to be here. Because as, as I found out, that um, even from Jesus' initial response to them, to his brothers, which me, I understood it differently when I read it, Jesus' response to his brothers was very clear to them that Jesus simply didn't want to go with the brothers to the festival because it wasn't the right time for him yet. So Jesus, di Jesus didn't say that he wasn't going altogether. Jesus um, actually implied to them that he would go when the time was right, only when the time was right, as evident from what Jesus said in verses 6 and 8. So his time was not yet fully come. So his brothers weren't surprised to later find Jesus at the festival because they knew that Jesus was just waiting for the right timing. And the uh, um, when that cleared up in my mind, it was like, oh, oh all right, that's what Jesus meant. And um, Jesus waiting for the right timing leads us to the second question um, that I normally use or I normally ask for Bible discovery. The second question that I ask uh, goes, do you think that the passage we just read says anything about God? So does it say anything about God? And for me, I believe this passage clearly shows us that God is a God of perfect timing and of perfect execution. God doesn't just do things randomly or whenever he feels like it. God knows when the timing is right for him to act, and he also knows the best way to do it. Like the brothers wanted Jesus to, you know, to, to show up um, with pomp and sh sh just show himself to, to, to the public with probably in a glamorous way. Um, but no, Jesus knew exactly when and how he should start teaching publicly again to avoid being prematurely arrested by the Jewish leaders. Remember, there was a, a bad plot against Jesus. He knew about it. And so he knew how to address or how, how to address that issue. Now, realizing this truth about God encouraged me a lot especially regarding my plans and my prayer requests um, that seem to have no answer or, or no fruition, even if I go to God and ask him, Lord, help me with this. And sometimes God seems 
quiet or sometimes there's there seems to be a delay so being reminded that god is a god of perfect timing and of perfect execution gives me assurance and hope that when god doesn't answer my prayer immediately he is probably waiting for the perfect time to grant it you know god knows when to act or possibly that my request like jesus's brother's um, request for him to go to the festival early and start teaching maybe that wasn't the best way to go about things and it's it's the same case for me when i ask things from god jesus may actually say no to some of my prayer requests if what i am asking for is not what is best for me or the situation at hand and i've learned to trust that god knows better than me god knows better than me so i will leave my prayer request before god i'll open my heart before him god knows what's in my heart anyways i couldn't hide it from him so i just lay it out before god i open my prayer my prayer request my concerns to god and i know that he will do what is best regarding whatever it is that i am praying about and he would not give me something that ultimately will not be good for me even if i keep asking him very fervently and very sincerely about it i mean god wants me to do that to, to ask fervently and sincerely and with patience but ultimately his will be done so that that's that's something that i've learned that i i need to let go and let god answer in his own perfect time in his own perfect way in matthew 7 9 to 11 jesus said which of you if your son asks for bread will give him a stone or if or if he asks for a fish will give him a snake if you then though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him so clearly our Heavenly Father will only grant our specific requests, the, ex the, the exact thing that we're asking for, if what we are asking for will actually be good for us or um, the issue at hand. So God will not give us something that will harm us, nor will he respond in bad timing. So again, God is a God of perfect timing and of perfect execution. We can trust that when we ask him in prayer, what he gives us will always be the best for us. Even if sometimes we don't understand how and when God will be working. So we can trust in Jesus. He is a God of perfect timing and of perfect execution. Now, the third question I normally ask for Bible discovery, it goes something like, do you think this passage that we just read says anything about people? So the second question was, does it say anything about God? Third question, does it say, do, do we think it says anything about people? And I believe it does. I actually think this, this portion of scripture says a lot about people. But because we're only doing a short devotion, we don't have much time for um, uh, more discussion on that question. So to answer that question, and usually have one more question after that um we'll talk about john 7 1 to 14 again next wednesday i will leave that for next wednesday for now let me just close with a word of prayer let's pray right heavenly father thank you for your word once more thank you for this this portion of jesus's life that was recorded by john uh, to show us and to teach us that you are a God of perfect timing and you are a God of perfect execution. You know when to do things and how to do things in a way that would be best for us. Thank you that you love us and that you care for our needs and that you won't let us um, go astray even towards our own desires if those things will not be good for us. Uh, thank you that we can lift our concerns to you and you are there for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for us. And again, all these things we pray to you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, that's all for today. Thanks again, everyone. Hope you join uh, me again uh, next Wednesday.